How's it going, people? Uh, I've had this in my cupboard for a while. I like a little sour mash bourbon from time to time. Yeah, but I haven't had any with a video. It's probably three years old. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pour one out. They say it's pretty smooth, but uh, not as smooth as uh, the single malt scotch, which I've grown accustomed to. Chapter 13 of Osaya. And now, when the king, that's Noah, <laughs> had heard these words, he said unto his priests, Away with this fellow, and slay him. For what have we to do with him? For he is mad. And they stood forth and attempted to lay ha their hands on him, but he withstood them, and said unto them, Touch me not, for God shall smite you if you, if ye lay your hands upon me. For I have not delivered the message which the Lord sent me to deliver. Neither have I told you that which ye requested that I should tell. Therefore, God will not suffer that I shall be destroyed at this time. But I must fulfill the commandments wherewith God has commanded me. And because I have told you the truth, ye are angry with me. And again, because I have spoken the word of God, ye have judged me that I am mad. Oh, uh, choose your poison. Sour mash bourbon. Ah, oh, that is nice. Mm. And it came to pass, after Abinadi had spoken these words, that the people of King Noah durst not lay their hands upon him, for the Spirit of the Lord was upon him, and his face shone with an exceeding luster, even as Moses did while on Mount Sinai while speaking with the Lord. And he spake with power and authority from God. And he continued his words, saying, Ye say, wait, ye see, that ye have not power to slay me. Therefore I finish my message. Yea, and I perceive that it cuts you to your hearts, because I tell you the truth concerning your iniquities. Yea, and my words fill you with wonder and amazement. And with anger. All that, wow. But I finish my message, and then it matters not whither I go. If it be that I am saved. <laughs> he doesn't care when he dies. He's going to live forever after that. Strike him down, he'll be more powerful than ever. you just never see or hear from him again, that's all. <laughs> uh but he'll be powerful uh, in that life outside of reality, on the other side of the veil. But this much I tell you, what you do with me after this shall be as a type and a shadow of things to come. And now I read unto you the remainder of the commandments of God. For I perceive that they are not written in your hearts. I perceive that ye have studied and taught iniquity uh, the most parts of your lives. Boy, he's pretty good with these snap judgments. Yeah, perception's everything. He perceives it, so it is. And now 
Ye remember that I said unto you, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of things which are in heaven above, which are in the earth beneath, or which are in the water under the earth. And again, thou shalt not bow down unto them. Okay, we're doing the Ten Commandments. It's Sunday school, huh? All right. Uh, yeah, shall not bow thyself down unto them, nor serve them, for I... The Lord thy God am a jealous God. He's even upset about totem poles and shit. <laughs> Doesn't he know the difference between reality and fantasy, or is he just like his followers? <laughs> Visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations that of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments <laughs> too bad if they got some lousy ancestors you know <laughs> they may as well be evil anyway fuck it you know they were born fucked because <laughs> someone sinned you know three or four generations before that's always made sense. I think that's one of the first things that really struck me as a sour note when I was a kid, going, hey, wait a minute. My dad has a tattoo of Born to Raise Hell, so I was screwed already. <laughs> he does. <laughs> uh. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thousands, really? There's like been billions of people on the planet. The only way this doesn't completely suck ass is if reincarnation is true. Because <laughs> there's been billions of people. That, that doesn't even cover all the J-dubs. Why are they recruiting more? <laughs> when they've exceeded their number <laughs> already. Yeah. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord, the God, wait, the Lord thy God in vain, for the God, wait, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor, and do all thy work. But the seventh day, the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle. How do you stop your cattle from wor working? <laughs> stop making milk. Uh, nor thy, the, thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth. I mean, yeah, why did it take six days when he could just... <sighs> and why did he need to rest? And how do you know what a day is? They didn't make the sun until the fourth day, I believe. <laughs> How can there be an evening and a morning? <sighs> I know, from space, but I mean. <laughs> For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is and all in them. Wait, and all that in them is. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. 
thou shalt not kill. I just had a Carl's Jr. burger a little while ago. I mean, something had to die for that. I mean, every time I brush my teeth, I kill a bunch of things. I mean, every how do you not kill stuff? I'm sorry. I think every breath you take, you probably kill something. <laughs> Thou shalt not commit adultery. Yeah, like Jacob. I mean, the other Jacob. <laughs> Thou shalt not steal. You mean, like, don't do what Nephi did to Laban? <laughs> Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. But I can bear false witness against anyone else then, apparently. Right? Uh, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Nor his manservant. Nor his maidservant. Nor his ox. Nor his ass nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Why didn't you say don't covet anything that's your neighbor's? You're writing on gold, dickheads, you wasteful pricks. <sighs> hmm. nice. I wonder why I've left it alone so long. Hmm. And it came to pass that after Abinadi had made an end of these sayings, that he said unto them, that he said unto them, Have ye taught this people that they should observe to do all these things uh, for to keep these commandments? It'd be nice if they put, you know, um, Quotation marks. I say unto you, nay. For ye have, uh, for if ye have, the Lord would not have caused me to come forth and to prophesy evil against this people in disguise. And now ye have said that salvation, salvation cometh by the law of Moses. I say unto you that it is expedient that ye should keep the law of Moses as yet. But I say unto you that the time shall come when it shall no longer, no more be expedient to keep the law of Moses. You keep saying that. But it's uh, 148 B.C. So... That's like saying, yeah, I'm going to be loyal until the mutiny, which is coming pretty soon, but I'm loyal still. No, you're not. You're not keeping a law of Moses, because you're already, I mean, you're ready to jump the gun uh, and start the race before J.C.'s even shown up. I mean, you're already celebrating his death and resurrection, and his grandfather hasn't even been born yet. And moreover, I say unto you that salvation does not come by the law alone. Now, we're quoting Paul now, because Jesus said it did. And were it not for the atonement which God himself shall make for the sins and iniquities of his people, that they must inavoidably perish, notwithstanding the law of Moses. And now I say unto you that it was expedient that there should be a law given unto the children of Israel. Yea, even a very strict law, like Sharia or something. For they were a stiff-necked people. <coughs> uh, quick to do iniquity and slow to remember the Lord their God, who's always been slow to hear their prayers. I mean, it took him 400 years before he realized, 
Oh, hey, those Israelites are in bondage. Guess I better do something about that. I'll find someone to do all my work for me. I'll give them a magic staff. Tell them to lay the smack down on Egypt. But, yeah, we'll drag it out. <laughs> Therefore, there was a law given to them, yea, a law of performances and of ordinances, a law which they were to observe strictly from day to day to keep them in remembrance of God and their duty towards him. But behold, I say unto you that all these things were types of things to come. But now, did they understand the law? I say unto you, Nay, they did not understand the law, and this because of the hardness of their hearts. For they understood not that there could not any man be saved except it were through the redemption of God and animal sacrifices and shit. But behold, did not Moses prophesy unto them concerning the coming of the Messiah? And that God should redeem his people? Yea, and even all the prophets who have prophesied ever since the world began, have they not spoken more or less concerning these things? Yeah, see, the world began like just six days before human ra the human race, because that's all people can stand to think that things going on without people around to appreciate them. <laughs> Billions of years? Nah, thousands. <laughs> Um, have they not said that God himself should come down among the children of men and take upon him the form of a man, like Zeus used to do, and go forth in mighty power upon the face of the earth? Yea, and have they not also uh, not said also that he should bring to pass the resurrection of the dead, and that he himself should be oppressed and afflicted. And that's it for chapter 13. But 14 so quick, and I don't think there's anything to drink to, so let's blow it out. It's just uh, Abinadi quoting uh, Isaiah 53. Yeah, or that shit. Yay! Even doth not Isaiah say... Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, uh, and we hid as it were our face from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried away our sorrows. Yet we did we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes were we healed. And uh, all... We, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid him on him the iniquities of all of us. He was oppressed, and 
He was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgressions of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich uh, in his death, because he had done no evil, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his land, and he shall seal the, see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion of that uh, portion with the great, and he shall divide, divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sins of the many, and made intercession for the transgressors. I don't think there's anything to drink in the next chapter. Just one. Eh... Uh. It's going long, but since no one's watching, what the fuck, I'll make this. All right, 15. And now, uh, Abinadi said unto them, by the way, wasn't it an, office, uh, an awesome prophecy of Jesus there? I mean, it sort of sounded like him, and it really didn't. And mentions nothing about his resurrection or virgin birth or... Yeah, you just have to cherry pick, and then if you put it all together, you can boggle it into whatever message you want. <sighs> and now Abinadi said unto them, I would that ye should understand that God himself shall come down among the children of men, and shall redeem his people. And because he dwelleth in flesh, he shall be called the Son of God. And having subjected uh, the flesh to the will of the Father, being the Father and the Son... The Father, because he was conceived by the power of God, and the Son, because of the flesh, thus becoming the Father and the Son. <laughs> and they are one God. Yay! The very eternal Father of heaven and earth. And thus, the flesh becoming subject to the Spirit, or the Son to the Father, being one God, suffereth temptation, and yieldeth not to the temptation, but suffereth himself to be mocked, and scourged, and cast out, and disowned by his people. And after all this, after working many mighty miracles among the children of men, he shall be led, yea, even as Isaiah said, as a sheep before the shearer is dumb. So he opened not his mouth, just like I never did when the old man was staring me down and I knew I was busted, and anything I said would just dig a deeper hole for me. You have nothing to say, young man? <laughs> That's the way I always saw that. <sighs> Yea, even so he shall be led, crucified and slain, the flesh becoming subject even unto death. I mean, isn't it interesting? We get into a Mormon prophecy and suddenly it's super specific. <laughs> But then they go to Isaiah, and they're rather vague. And not really a very good match. 
the will of the Son being swallowed up by the will of the Father. And thus God breaketh the bands of death, having gained the victory over death. I guess he couldn't do it without this weird ritual of his. <laughs> he had to play the game by these rules or else it wouldn't work. <sighs> Given the Son power to make intercession for the children of men, have, having ascended into heaven, having the bowels of mercy, being filled with compassion towards the children of men, standing betwixt them and justice, having broken the bands of death, taking upon himself their iniquity and their transgressions, having redeemed them and satisfied the demands of justice. And now I say unto you, who shall declare his generation? <laughs> Behold, I say unto you, that when the soul hath been made an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. And now what say ye? And who shall be his seed? Behold, I say unto you, that whosoever has heard the words of the prophets, Yea, all the holy prophets who have prophesied concerning the coming of the Lord, <laughs> I say unto you, that all those who have hearkened unto their words and believe that the Lord would redeem his people and have looked forward to that day for the remission of their sins, I say unto you, that these are his seed, or they are the, uh, or they are the heirs of the kingdom of God. For these are they whose sins he was born has borne. These uh, are they for whom he has died. Just those people, though. To redeem them from their transgressions. And now, are they not his seed? Yea, I say the... Uh, eh, yea, and... Are they not the prophets, every one that has opened his mouth to prophecy? That has not fallen into transgression? I mean all the holy prophets ever since the world began, because, like I said, the world began and then there were people. Dinosaurs? Well, I guess they must have lived at the same time. Oh, that's so... <sighs> it's, it's so bizarre that anyone could believe a thing like that. <sighs> yeah. I say unto you that they are his seed. The prophets, prophets not the dinosaurs. The, they were just unfortunate species that didn't work out. Another experiment of gods that failed. Actually, they were on the earth many billions of years, I understand, or many millions of years, excuse me, like in the hundreds of millions. And we've been here a tick, and we're bragging. Yeah. And these are they who have published peace, who have brought good tidings of good, uh, who have published salvation and said unto Zion thy God reigneth I can't believe they're repeating this shit again they just said that two chapters ago didn't they or three chapters ago and oh how beautiful upon the mountains were his feet and again how beautiful upon the mountain are his feet are the feet of those who shall hereafter publish peace. Yea, from this time henceforth and forever. Forever is what it's all about. That's all you guys want, just forever. 
Nobody wants to be temporary, I guess. Everything is temporary. <sighs> and behold, I say unto you, this is not all. For, oh, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. <laughs> that is the founder of peace. Yea, even the Lord, who has redeemed his people. Yea, him who has granted salvation upon unto his people. I should have done a beautiful upon the mountains feet drinking deal or something. He's found a new phrase he just can't seem to stop playing with. For were it not for the redemption which he hath made for his people, which was prepared from the foundation of the world. Yeah, it couldn't have been here before us. Well, maybe five days. I say unto you, were it not for this, all mankind must have perished. But behold, the bands of death shall be broken, and the Son of Man reigneth, and hath power over the dead. Therefore he bringeth to path, pass, he bringeth to pass, the resurrection of the dead. Fuck it. Bring it to pass. That's good enough for me. Cheers. And there cometh a resurrection, even a first resurrection, yea, even a resurrection of those that have been, and who are, and who shall be, even unto the resurrection of Christ. For so he shall be called, because he hasn't come yet. I mean, he hasn't, he hasn't even, his grandparents haven't even been born yet. They are raised to dwell with God, who has redeemed them. Thus, they have eternal life through Christ. How selfish. They just want to live forever at any cost. I mean, they'll suck the holiest, holiest of holies, you know. <laughs> who has broken the bands of death? That's what this is all about. Let's defeat death, at least in our imaginations, if not in reality. And these are those who have part in the first resurrection. And these are they that have died before Christ came, in their ignorance, not having salvation declared upon them. And thus the Lord bringeth about restoration of these, and they have a part in the first resurrection. Or have eternal life, being redeemed by the Lord. And little children also have eternal life. And puppies and kittens and cute birds. Come on, there's got to be bird song in heaven. I mean, that would suck if there wasn't that. But behold, and fear and tremble before God, your imaginary friend. Who scares you a little bit. Maybe a lot. For ye ought to tremble. For the Lord redeemeth none. Such that rebel against him. And die in their sins. Yea. Even all those. That have perished in their sins. Ever since the world began. We're talking about you Cain. <laughs> that have willfully rebelled against God, that have known the commandments of God, and would not keep them, these are they that have no part in the first resurrection. Therefore ought ye not to tremble? 
for salvation cometh to none such, for the Lord hath redeemed none such. Yea, neither can the Lord redeem such, for he cannot deny himself, for he cannot deny justice when it has its claim. And now I say unto you that the time shall come that the salvation of the Lord shall be declared unto every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Because he scattered the languages, uh, confounded the languages like a dipshit. That was smart. Yea, Lord, thy watchmen shall lift up their voice. With the voice to together shall they sing. I know, this is... All familiar, because they've said this before. <sighs> and they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again to Zion. I swear to you, I'm in chapter 15 now. Wasn't that like in chapter 12 or 13, where they said all the same shit? Break forth into joy. Sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem, for his people hath redeemed Jerusalem, and the Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. All right, that's chapter 15, and I've had enough. Ah. Uh. That's uh, Abinadi standing there doing a long uh, sermon at a hostile you know, priest and a king. Uh, yeah, really realistic there. Especially when you find out how this wraps up, which uh, you'll, we'll get to. As soon as he shuts the fuck up and dies. It's like King Benji all over again. Sounds like him. They all sound the same. Every word of this book sounds like it was written by the same person. I mean, read your Bible. You can spot different voices, different cadences, and styles, and word usage, and word selection, and favorite phrases. Names of things. This, uh-uh, very homogenous. And accidentally humorous. <laughs> Intoxicating. Peace the fuck out. And have a wonderful, whatever it is you are having.